Well, as I said, Christmas is always a big thing, you know, my family and this one Christmas, my sister was really little, she was six, and all she wanted for Christmas was a kitten. That was her big thing, right? So my dad, you know, went out and got her a kitten. And Christmas morning, I woke up and I run out to the tree and there's my mother behind the couch, behind a Kodak Instamatic camera. And she's waiting for my sister who's behind me, who's running out to the tree. And she's behind the couch, she's like, Tina, look, look under the tree, look under the tree. And my mother has wedged a kitten between Christmas presents and put like little ceremonial tinsel on its head. And she's behind the Kodak capturing my sister's expression of joy, you know, and seeing the cat. And my sister's like, oh, and she hugs the little kitten. And my mother's like, Tina, 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 take the tinsel off the cat's head so he doesn't choke on it. You know, like even the cat. So, you know, that was just for show. That was just for the, you know, for the picture, all right? I'm the kind of kid, my deal was, I like, it's Christmas morning. I'm not tearing open presents. I've crawled under the tree, laying on my back, looking up at the light bulbs, listening to them go on and off. You know, I was not right, okay? My sister's holding the kitty cat, and at first it was just, the cutest little six years old girl sneeze. Just a one little like, achoo, you know, she sneezed. Followed by about 1,200 sneezes and her face blew up like a basketball. She was a, a complete wreck. Now they wrap her in, a co in my father's coat. Now everybody's in the station wagon. We're driving down to St. John's Hospital, emergency room. I'm sitting out there with my father. My mother comes out with the, <clears throat> my sister. She's much better. <clears throat> Diagnosis, my sister is allergic to cats, <laughs> you know, okay. So my father, uh, you know, is disappointed because, you know, it's all she wanted was a kitten. So the Dr. D'Angelo says, well, maybe she might outgrow it. So try again in a few years. A couple years go by, my father decides to get another little kitten for my sister. This time they bring the kitten in the house on Christmas Eve. Just the fact that the cat's in the house, they're hiding it in their bedroom. My sister's throat constricts. She's in her room. They're putting calamine lotion on her. And that catastrophic hallway light is outside of the door of my bedroom because it's like near midnight, Christmas Eve, and that bright light is in the hallway. Next thing I know, I hear the Fury 3 station wagon turn on in the driveway, and my father is now taking this cat to my aunt's house, because the cat can't be in the house, right? And I could picture the cat bathed in the, in the blue-green light of the station wagon dashboard, driving on Christmas morning, you know, at midnight, to my aunt's house. And when my father gets to my aunt's house, my aunt was having a rough time. And she thought the cat was like a sign of good luck. So she said, I'm gonna name the cat Messiah. And this is gonna change, because it's come to me on Christmas morning, you know? Not a fucking damn thing changed in her life, but that became her cat, right? Yeah. And so my father didn't quite know what to do, so he got Tina the next best thing to a cat, which was a chihuahua, which was Ringo, which became our chihuahua, which I put in the refrigerator and on door jams. And Ringo was just constantly shaking, you know, and I spent a tremendous amount of time with Ringo, like I spent with my dog Sam now, but Ringo was the first, and, um, <clears throat> <clears throat> Ringo at like 15 died and uh, he dies and my mother's like that's it no more dogs in this house Ringo's dead and that's it when I'm done with animals I'm completely done so remember I lived home till I was 21 you know I didn't have anywhere to go I was still living home at 21 and one Saturday morning my father comes into the kitchen and he's like you know Kay I was thinking, I think I'm going to shoot up the line to Pleasantville today and uh, I'm going to buy Tina one of them Yorkies. You know, she loves those little dogs, you know, the little Yorkshire Terriers, the yeah. tiny ones, the rich person's dog. Right. And my mother's like, he goes, you know, she always wanted a kitten. She never could have a cat because she was allergic and we got a Ringo, but that wasn't, you know, it's not the same thing. And she loves these dogs. So I'm going to go up and get her one of these Yorkies. And my mother's like, how much? Emilio, how much is that? And he's like, 
Eh, it's twelve hundred bucks, but she needs, she loves this dog. I'm gonna go get her the dog. So I'm sitting in there, I'm like just listening to this shit. You know, I'm not commenting. It's not my thing. You know. <laughs> they take off in the station wagon. A few hours later, I'm making a bologna sandwich in the kitchen. And this is absolutely real time, okay? I'm in the kitchen, station wagon pulls into the driveway. My father gets out, my sister gets out, and this tiny, tiny, tiny little dog gets out of the car. It's this big, it's like seven weeks old, it's got two big pink bows in its head, right? Beautiful pink bows. It's a seven-week-old Yorkie, and it starts running around the driveway like a little cartoon dog. It's full of life, it's hopping, it's jumping, it's got the pink bows, right? It's sunny out, I got a bologna sandwich, and my mother goes to the window. Tina, oh my God, look at that little doggy. Oh, he's beautiful. What did you name him, Tina? And they're all coming in now, right? My sister says, Portia. My sister doesn't have a lot of class. And, you know, she, didn't have a, she doesn't have a tremendous propensity for names or things. And I'm like, Portia, what a shit name. But anyway, she's like, Portia. So they come into the kitchen. Now the kitchen is a linoleum floor kitchen, small kitchen. And this is actual time, no bullshit. This is real time. This is what happens. Dog comes into the kitchen. Dog runs up and down the kitchen. My mother's like this. Oh my God, Portia, you are just the cutest little doggy. You are just the cutest little dog. What's that on your head, Portia? What is that on your head? And my mother, with a seven week old dog with two beautiful pink bows on its head, has spotted a piece of lint and or string on top of this little dog's head. What is that on your head, Portia? Let mommy get it. And she reaches down to get the lint from the little doggy's head. The dog sees her hand go down, and the dog jumps up, loses its back legs off the linoleum, and comes down on its back, dead. Broke its neck, dead instantly, laying on the, on the linoleum floor. Yeah. My sister is like, you killed it! She runs outside off into the woods. Ten minutes later, the dog is in a Christmas Oreo cookie can in the front yard. It literally was in the house for tops 36, 38 seconds. I mean, it made an appearance, it went back and forth, and then my mother went down on a fucking dog that was beautiful, two beautiful pink bows. What is that on your head, Portia? Let mommy get it. Boom, 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 done. And gone. All over. Never, never to be seen from again. Absolutely that fast. Can you believe it? Absolutely true story. Dog was in the house 36 seconds. And my mother, and my mother like, my father's out there buried in the yard in a Christmas Oreo cookie can. That was, that was Portia. No. That was it. But you know, hey, sometimes you live a long life, sometimes you live a short life. You know, I felt bad for the dog, man, you know? It was a, just the wrong, she, you know. And I often think of that dog and I think, you know, she got Portia, but she never got me. You know, it's like, I'm still standing, Ray. You didn't get me down, Ray. You know, I'm still, I'm still here, Ray.